But now I want to pass you over to Darren Barefoot, who has been a long-term advocate for us here in Net Squared Vancouver. I probably dragged him into one of my first three events years ago, because um, he's another veteran in this Tech for Good space. So ladies and gentlemen, give it up. It's Darren Barefoot time. That's the first time my name has been followed by the word time in my entire life, I would say. I'm not sure I feel about it. Uh, before we get started, I want to recognize that we are here on the unceded uh, traditional territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, and Squamish peoples. We are grateful that we can live and work on their lands. Um, yeah, just a few words before we get into this session. I wanted to talk briefly about what motivated me to organize this particular session, which is to say, hello, fellow kids, how are things going? And, and ask them some questions. I was thinking first about uh, how I used the internet a long time ago. Um, there might be a few people in this room who are as old as me and remember things called news groups. Does anyone else in the room remember this? Yeah, okay, a few, thank you. Yeah, so like I spent a long time, I can actually find my own news group post from 1996 where I was arguing with um, Canucks, fellow Canucks fans on like the, the, what was called the, whatever it was, whatever that system was called. But it's interesting in a number of ways in that it was entirely distributed. Nobody owned that system. It was like fundamentally free and it was all text-based, right? And then we, I was talking to my partner uh, more recently about this conference we organized for a number of years, which was called Northern Voice. And it started in 2000, 2005 and it was literally called a blogging conference which from the perspective of 2019 sounds like we had a conference about email or something like but uh, it was a blogging conference and it ran for a number of years and then it became irrelevant because there were just too many possible other ways to blog and then blogging basically kind of went away or became baked into basic systems right so so I've been around digital technology a long time and I am therefore old and I also don't have any children. So I, I'm, I'm constantly worried and curious about as I get farther and farther away from young people and how they use technology, I want to understand how that works. So tonight we have assembled a focus group of three for you. And the format will be, I'm going to invite each of them in turn up and we'll do a, a roughly 15 minute on stage interview here. And then at the, you can save your questions and at the end we'll have all three of them up and you can ask questions. And that how, that's how it works. So um, Eli, maybe you can help with the other microphone there. Thank you. Um, yeah, and so with that in mind, I want to, um, we're going to go in order of age from youngest to oldest. So, uh, Finney, please join me on stage. So this is Finney McKnight, and she is a grade nine. She, you're a grade nine student at, yeah. at York House. Terrific. Um, bring that microphone up, please. There you go. Uh, let's start with a super easy question. Yeah. What kind of phone do you have? Um, I have my dad's old iPhone 6 Plus. iPhone 6 Plus. Okay. And you have a laptop? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a tablet? Yeah. I don't use it that much though. No? <laughs> okay. I, I, we may come back to that. So you get up in the morning. What is the first thing you do on your phone? Or do, like, do you look at your phone right away or um, not? Well, before school, probably not because I'm in a bit of a rush, but probably like once I get like my first break at like during school, probably. Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm going to ask some of the same questions to each, each person and some different questions, so don't be concerned if you hear repeats. And so what would you do? What was the first thing you would look at on your phone? Um, probably text messages or Instagram. Yeah? Okay. By the way, side note, I was talking to somebody earlier who is a 20-something, and she said she uh, has a difficult relationship with Instagram, and she installs and dele deletes and reinstalls it up to four <laughs> times a week. Oh, wow. Because she's like, feels a certain degree of shame about it, about how much time she spends on it, and then also needs to get back on it. So, um, okay, so Instagram, text message, or Instagram. So you're looking at kind of notifications from your friends yeah, for the most yeah. part? <laughs> yeah. And then... Okay, so after Instagram and text messages, what is another thing you would do commonly on your phone, would you say? Mm, maybe if I'm not on my laptop, probably email, because like, I get a lot of school notifications from there. Yeah, so email still matters to you. Yeah. And is well, it not most... Like, not like personally, like I don't get that many personal notifications, but it's like my school runs all their like homework and notifications okay. through it. So. so basically you get email about school. Yeah. And, but you don't, your friends would never email no. you. No. No. Um, is, so if, okay, talking about your friends, let's say you're planning to meet somebody, you're going to go do something, like see a movie or something, and you're not next to that person, how would you organize it? What would you do? Um, 
probably Instagram message or like if that person doesn't have it, probably just message them. Yeah. And how do you de- how do you decide if you use Instagram message or just plain old text message? Um. Well, if like someone, like one of my friends doesn't have Instagram, but like most people do, yeah. um, probably just Instagram because like I know people are on it more probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would you say that Instagram is by far the most popular app amongst your friends? Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. And. Would you say, um, do you, how often would you post to Instagram yourself? Um, not that often. No. Like, I know some people do a lot. Like, it kind of just depends on your, like, what you're doing. Like, maybe if I have, like, a bunch of exciting things happening at yeah. once. But um, really not that often. Like, maybe once every few months. Okay. Okay. So, would your friends post more often than that, though? Yeah, probably. It just depends on the person. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Okay, so, oh, I was going to ask this. Do you use your phone for school at all in any context besides email? Um, well, I do have, like, a school platform that, like, I get notifications yeah. off of, but that's mostly just if I'm in a rush and on my computer with me. Mm, okay. But, like, I wouldn't, like, at home use my phone to, use, to compu- uh, like, do schoolwork. I just use my computer. Just use your computer. Okay. Um, would you use your, com- what else would you use your computer for? Um, I'd occasionally watch like a movie on Netflix or something, um, but mostly just homework. And what if you wanted to buy something online or wanted to shop for something online? Would um, you use your phone or your computer? Probably my computer. Yeah. But like I don't buy a lot of stuff. Like I look at stuff sure. online, but yeah, like yeah. I'd probably like prefer to look at it online and then go in and store and oh, buy yeah. it. Okay. Why is that? Do you think? Well, I don't know. Like I just find buying clothes like I like to like try it on before sure. I do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So my favorite question I think of the evening is what frustrates you when you see an older person using a computer? Uh, well, probably when an older person has like a way nicer phone and computer than I do and they're like, don't even use it right. Yeah. Like, I, like if I'm like, if I had that phone, I'd be using it like, I don't know, like more useful or yeah. whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, when you watch your parents, one of whom is here, um, <laughs> uh, use the computer or the phone, you're just not like, oh, why are you doing that? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but like, like my parents at least are pretty good with technology. But like, more like my grandparents, sure. like probably not as much. Like my grandma has a flip phone. <laughs> oh, she got a flip phone. <laughs> wow. Okay, that is uh, remarkable. Um, how do you, out of curiosity, uh, what what do you use to communicate with your parents? If they're, do you, is it text message with your text parents? message? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or are they calling? Okay. Um, games. You play games on your phone. Um, I have like one or two games that I like, but mm-hmm. um, like I'm not like always on my phone playing games. Yeah. So I was looking at my phone, and on Apple, on the iOS, you can see your screen time each yeah, week, yeah. and you can see like what you spend all your time on. Embarrassingly, mine is a lot of Reddit. We can process <laughs> process that later. Um, what do you think yours, your top three, would be? Um. Well, I actually have like a notification that like I get like a notification every week, like saying if it's like per- my percentage is down oh, yeah. or up. Mm-hmm. So like. Like usually, if it's like way up, I try to like not use it as much. Like I, don't, I like personally do that just to like always like kind of mindfully have that. But I'd say probably email, Instagram, message. Yeah. Probably. So you're you're actually thoughtful about uh, yeah. about how much you use yeah. it. Yeah. That's funny because uh, I recently oh, that's why I picked that up a minute. I have this thing on my phone here, uh, which I'll show you and then show the audience, mm-hmm. which has this thing that's a little uh, the lock screen says what for. Why now? What else? To so try to motivate me to use my phone less, because it won't. I, I want to be mindful about yeah. it, as you say, and try to reflect on that. Um, just out of curiosity, people in the room, do you know how much time do you get those notifications from Apple, and are you aware of that? And are you are you ashamed of that? Is anyone else ashamed? I'm ashamed of that. Yeah, you, yeah, we are. Okay, that's fine. Some of us, it's okay. We can share. It's a, it's a, you know, uh, it's a good space here. Um, do you think your friends use their phone too much? Yeah, I, like I'd say definitely of my friends and like at my grade at my school, I'd probably be like on the lower side of yeah. using my phone. And like although like it's kind of your personal choice, like if you want to use your phone a lot, I, I personally think it sometimes gets a little bit overused. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, because why? Or how do well, you say more about that? Also, like I find like just like at lunch and recess, people are just like on their phones and stuff. Like I prefer to like usually go somewhere, or, like go outside or do something. But mm-hmm. I think people, it's like I don't know. Like, what else? Like, you're just bored, you go on your phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, me too. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, I want to know about TikTok. Do you know about TikTok? I've heard of it. I don't 
use it or anything, oh. but I, I feel like it's not that popular. Really? No. Okay. So TikTok was a thing. Anybody in the room a regular TikTok user? No. TikTok is a thing. It may be like younger than you. Do you it's think kind of a joke for like is people it? my age. Yeah. It's like kind of like you do it as like a joke, like not like seriously. Not doing seriously. It. Do you think it's for younger people than you? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. Like, like nine to like 13 maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. TikTok used to be uh, musically, musically, right? right? Yeah. yeah, musically. If you know young people or have kids, musically, it was kind of a lip sync video platform. Yeah, so like you could like pick a song and then you like record a video, like it like kind of lip syncs it for you. So like, it kind of looks like you're like in a music video, so you like dance around and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like it's growth uh, from a marketing perspective. Its growth has been crazy. It's, it grew faster than any other social platform last year. But it is. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, like, but oh. it's still it's still much smaller than the others, but yeah. it's just growing a lot mm -hmm. faster. Still. Still, yeah, still. Um, so I'm always interested in this because you, you hear about new social platforms or things like this and then you hear about the first companies going on and it's always like NFL teams or like cool clothing brands or something and then everybody goes on it, right? And that's how <laughs> it was with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and yeah. everything else too. And so I just read the article where like so-and-so is on TikTok now. And there's a lot of like uh, celebrities and influencer kind of people on yeah. TikTok too. I'm not on it. Like I probably like just as much as other social media, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's talk about how you watch TV. Mm. Do you, uh, do you, does your family have cable still? Yeah. It's because your dad's a big sports fan, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. we all like TV in our Yeah, house, so. okay. And so you would, would you watch most of your TV on like the TV on yeah. cable? Still? Yeah, yeah. Like I record all the shows I like so I can watch them weekly. Okay. Um, and you say you watch Netflix a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Like my, I use cable TV a lot more. But, really? Okay. But I know a lot of people use Netflix a lot more like in my grade. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we have to talk a little bit about YouTubers and influencers on Instagram mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. All right, do you have a favorite YouTube channel? Oh, or I don't watch YouTube at all, oh, really, no. no. That's interesting. Is that a, do you think that's unusual or is that commonplace? Um, I, I, once again, I think it's kind of more the like younger people now. Like, like, I feel like like people in my grade don't really have like a favorite YouTuber anymore. Like, I think more mm -hmm. in like elementary school. Oh, like, interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay. And similarly, like Instagram, and we use this term influencers, but we just yeah. mean people, like popular people yeah. on Instagram. Uh, do you have a favorite? No, I don't even, it doesn't even have to be that. I really like animals doing things as an Instagram oh, channel, yeah. right? Do you know it's like yeah, animals yeah. doing things? Yeah. But is there a favorite Instagram channel you have? Um, or is it just your friends mostly? I like, like, the like celebrities I like. Like, I follow those people, but like, I, I do like videos like that and stuff. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of advertising online? Do you like notice it? Do you yeah, think? like I just be like scrolling. This is like an advertisement, but like I don't usually like take big notice of it. Like I don't like very rarely do I actually like click on something. Yeah, 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 certainly. And are you aware? Are you aware of something like where you say you might shop for a shirt, mm -hmm. and then that shirt follows you around the internet? Yeah, I de not necessarily on Instagram, but like if I'm like searching for something, I, like I see it all the time, like the exact same things. Yeah, over and over again. We call that remarketing, and mm -hmm. it's creepy, but that is, uh, <laughs> it's also very effective. Yeah, uh, so like, if you could, for, like sometimes I'd forget about what I was looking for, I'm like, oh, there it is again. There it is again, yeah, totally, mm -hmm. totally. I've got a pair of boots following me around the internet <laughs> right now. It's been, it's been weeks. <laughs> um, terrific. Um, I'm just going through my questions quickly here to see if there's anything I missed. Um, no, let's leave it there for now, and we'll get you back up in a little Great. bit to, to uh, answer questions from the group. So think of questions for Finney, and when we go through the other two speakers, we'll do questions at the end. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. So a round of applause for Finney. <laughs> Gently. Terrific. Okay. Uh, next up, we are moving from high school to university. Please a round of applause for Emma Joa. Have a seat. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. I'm going to uh, look at my watch just to, so I can keep an eye on the time, not because I'm bored or something. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Like the first time my name has ever been said right. Being really? called, yeah. I'm friends with your dad, so I've had a lot of experience. It's fair, yeah. Emma's name is spelled D J W A, so it can be a little challenging for people, I guess. It's usually said Dijawa. Dijawa, yeah, no. no. Yeah, no, um, So Emma, you are a fourth year film student, film studies student at Capilano University. Yes. Yeah. And your, what is your area of focus? Uh, cinematography. Cinematography, yeah. You're going to be the next great cinematographer. And you've worked on shows I know already. 
So, Some way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mostly because I told you about them. Sorry? Mostly because I told you about them. They're not too big. <laughs> no, no. You worked on The Magicians. I love yeah. The Magicians. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Highly recommend The Magicians, by the way, if anyone. Um, so I'm going to start with the same questions I asked Finney. What kind of phone do you have? I have a Samsung S8. So an Android. An Android, yeah. Um, uh, let's just interrogate that for a moment. Why do you have an Android and not an iPhone? Oh, well. <laughs> yeah? Uh, I had an iPhone, and then I mistakenly drowned it uh, mm -hmm. at work, mm -hmm. and then I tried the Pixel, Oh yeah. and I hated it. Oh. Um, I think I got very unlucky, because all the problems I had, no one else has had, mm. but it sucked so much, I can never, well, not for a long time, go back to Google. Uh, and then I just like had buddies and boyfriends that had the Samsung phones, okay. and I liked them. Yeah, yeah. And do you have any like snap judgments when you see people with an Android or an iPhone, or no, you're not like... I don't understand big phones, but that's because I have small pockets. Sure, yeah. Uh -huh. um, fair enough. Okay, so that's your phone. You have a laptop? I do. Okay. And you have a tablet? Uh, I have like a Samsung LTE thing mm -hmm. that I got for free with my phone. Okay. Do you use it much? Uh, I tried using it for like scripts because it's good for meetings, oh, yeah. but it's not super effective because it's slow, so it's better just to bring my laptop or my phone. Okay. So yeah, let's just th talk about that breakdown for a minute. When do you choose to use your phone and when do you choose to use your laptop? So you're uh, in school, obviously. I'd mostly rather use my laptop, mm -hmm. um, especially if I'm working, it'll always be on my laptop. Um, yeah, because I just like, I, if I'm using my laptop, it's like work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if I'm using my phone, it's more social and I can't get texts on my laptop and that's like the most social yes, thing for me. Okay. What kind of laptop is it? That's a MacBook Pro okay. from 2015. Right. Um, okay, so you get up in the morning. When do you first pick up your phone? Maybe you haven't gotten up yet. I, I certainly pick it up in bed myself, but yeah. <laughs> uh, it's my alarm. <laughs> yeah, sure, it's lots of people. Who's but, whose phone is their alarm in the room? Yeah, see everybody. Okay, right? that's yeah. good. But yeah. I did just get an, oh my God, I'm not good at this. Yeah, I, right. I just got an alarm clock because I hate looking at my phone so soon. Oh, interesting. So I got an alarm clock, but it's the most annoying sound in the world. <laughs> So after a couple of days, I think I'm already back to going using my phone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, what is the first thing you look at when you pick up your phone? Uh, well, notifications. Yeah. Because I'm forced into them, if it, like alarm notifications, and then I usually just like. Sorry, I'm not good with this mic. That's fine. You're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like I check if I've got texts. Yeah. Um, actually, I usually swipe away all the texts, swipe away the Facebook messages, but I like glance over them because yeah. uh -huh. that's where work comes in, uh -huh. and then check my email, and then like not answer anyone and go on Instagram. That's my alarm. That's embarrassing. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Eli's going to adjust that for us. Um, eh, okay, so swipe. Yeah, so I was interested because when we were talking about this, uh, we were chatting on Instagram DMs, and then I was like, I sent you an Instagram DM to tell you you had an email because I might <laughs> presume that you wouldn't look at your email regularly. But you said the opposite. You said, oh, yeah, I look at my email way more than Instagram. Yeah, I hate Instagram Messenger. Oh, why? Uh, it's, I, I think it's because I, like, I have my phone set so that it doesn't use lots of data so that Instagram is really mostly used only when I have Wi-Fi. Okay. So I'm, if I'm ever out, I don't see them. But also I find it a really unreliable messaging platform. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes messages don't just don't send mm. and it's super frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, and email, I just love. It's like reliable and sure. I always know it's going to send. Gmail is just great. Um, and it's also like part of my, I don't know how to describe this, so I'm just going to show you. But yeah. it's like I, I can't not see my emails. Because they're just here. They just appear there yeah. in your kind of notification screen or yeah, yeah, yeah or so a it, notification screen, yeah. It's like I have like a widget of my email. Oh yeah. So there's like apps in my email, so right. I can't not see them. Okay, and so I'm gonna ask you the same question I asked Finney. If you're planning to meet friends, what is the, like the de facto organizing mechanism for that? A very long amount of time. Uh, text usually. Text. I like text and phone calls. Yeah. Uh, but it does depend on the friend. Some of my friends are shitty texters, but are decent with Messenger. Right. So it would be one of those two. Messenger being Facebook. Facebook mes Messenger. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So you would still have you would use use Facebook Messenger as a kind of messaging platform. Sometimes. Yeah, I yeah. use me Facebook Messenger and text pretty interchangeably. And you just have in your head which friends are the Facebook Messenger friends and which friends are the text friends. Yeah. 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 Um, nobody's mentioned WhatsApp. Uh. Yeah, I find it's more people who travel. Like I have friends, like lots of friends that like use it regularly, but it's people who've like moved here from like Brazil or from somewhere that's not 
Vancouver. It did become and more popular elsewhere in the world before it became popular here. Yeah, yeah. I, I used it when I lived in Dublin. Yeah. And I use it when whenever traveling, like my parents are in Costa Rica right now, so I'm mm -hmm. talking with them on uh, WhatsApp. Yeah, your dad texted me a picture of some molting cicadas yesterday, so that was fascinating. Wow. It was a little gross. Yeah, it was yeah. a little gross. <laughs> I got a picture of my mom. <laughs> yeah, I did get a picture of your mom. Um, yes. <laughs> so uh, I want to ask you this question, which is a little odd, but it harkens back to kind of my introduction and how I talked about how I used to use <laughs> okay. the internet. Outside of dating apps, putting dating apps aside for a second, do you ever interact with strangers on the internet? I saw that, and I, I actually have some of some answers written down because I thought I'd forget them. Yep, please. But um, not, and we're not there yet. Okay. It's later on your okay, question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are the harder ones. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, not really. Like the closest would be if I comment on like um, someone. Like I've, I'm mostly on Instagram, I follow like tattoos and photography because mm -hmm. that's what I'm visually interested in, and or actually. Uh, the American Society of Cinematographers and the Canadian Society sure. of Cinematographers. Yeah. Uh, I would comment on those, and that on, would be with people Instagram. I don't know. Yeah, on Instagram or like on Facebook, sometimes like on like meme groups. Yep. Sorry, can you just, can you say more about what a meme group is? <clears throat> uh, uh, there's this like it's a Facebook group, um, and people just post memes around a certain topic. Yeah. So in my case, there's one called Movie Set Memes. Oh, okay. And so there's a lot of memes about film school and about being on set and, and craft not services sleeping or enough, whatever. crafty, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So that's mostly like that, but usually the farthest reaches is just like people I don't know very well. Yeah, okay. So that's interesting. I think that, that I, I see that as a major shift in the way we use the internet is that I used to interact almost exclusively with strangers in the early days of the internet, and now most, most people yeah. almost exclusively interact with people they know. I think I'm a little bit irregular in that. Like, I know, like, my boyfriend's really into gaming, um, and he talks, like, everyone he knows he doesn't physically know, because, yeah. like, it's all an online gaming community mm -hmm. and, like, the YouTube gaming community, so, like, I think I'm kind of unusual in that, like, I try to be a little bit more private with it. Sure. Like, I, I don't like talking to strangers unless they're in person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. I want to ask you the question about um, what frustrates you when you see older people using computers or their phone. Uh, well, my dad's in tech, so it's more just annoying. He's better at a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. But my mom is really big font in her texts. Oh, really? And it's just like so big, you can't read it. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but she does, she's unaware that it's a really big font? No, no, font? she does it on purpose. Oh, right, so she okay. doesn't have to use reading glasses. Oh, it's a very it. intelligent thing. No, oh, she doesn't like text in caps. Oh, I see. Um, she like uh, texts, it's just like the font on her phone, she's adjusted to be large. Oh, I see, so she can read it. Yeah, so she okay. can read it. It's I a very it. intelligent move, but it's right. just like, it's too big. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I want to see um, an example of that later. That's I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But honestly, most of my family is pretty good. Yeah. Like. Absolutely. They just, there, yeah, so same. your sister is in first year university. Yes. Are you aware of ways in which she uses this apps or the di digital stuff differently than you? Uh, very differently than me. Yeah. Because like I think I'm pretty atypical in that like I I don't use a lot of them very much, but yep. she, uh, like, she's moved more into texting now. But for a while, it was like Snapchat was the best way to get a hold of her. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so like it's for like a sign of like uh, like that she's close with someone is like a snap streak oh yeah whereas like i that can you explain what a snap streak oh, is sorry. for people in the room if they don't know <laughs> um assuming you all know what snapchat is uh if you snap more than if you if you snap back and forth with someone three days in a row it's a snap streak i think yep. it's three days again i don't use it very much yeah, sure. um but then however many days is like so like it can go up to hundreds and hundreds of days like my little sister when she was in high school had like 385 days with one of her best friends and it was kind of a point of weird pride or something yeah mm -hmm. it, it, was more, it seemed a sign of friendship okay yeah like it was like we're so close we keep talking yeah should make t-shirts with your sna snap tree on or something but <laughs> yeah i got in trouble because ours dies <laughs> oh right <laughs> you, you, you let down the side <laughs> yeah. yeah you let down your sister <laughs> well that's uh tragic but funny <laughs> um okay let's talk a little bit about shopping do you when you shop for something say you want to buy a new pair of boots uh, like I did recently, <laughs> um, would you buy that on, would you start, would you shop on your phone or on your laptop or does it matter or? Again, I think I'm a little weird in that like I really don't like online shopping. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I just, it just is like feels like more of a hassle than just like, I mean, I live on Commercial Drive so like yep. a lot of stuff is already really accessible. The mm -hmm. closest is like, um, I'll sometimes buy things through my boyfriend and my dad's Amazon Prime. Oh, right. I need tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did that for a new USB hub, but sure. mostly it'll be in person, like going to stores. All right. 
So uh, basically every major tech company has had like a major privacy scandal recently, right? Dropbox, Google, Facebook, they've all had them, right? Yeah. Um, and it's always been fascinating to me uh, spending a long time that nobody really cares about privacy, right? Like you hear about a lot of noise in the media, but nobody's, hardly anybody stops using these channels because of that. How do you and your friends think about privacy? Do you care about it at all? Does, do these like scandals have any impact on you at all? Um, I think they definitely have an impact. Like everyone gets freaked out. Yeah. But it, it seems to depend on the circles. Like my friends from high school were a lot more paranoid around things like that. Oh, really? Like I had friends that like wouldn't, because there was for a while it was understood that like um, Messenger was listening with a mic stayed on. Yeah. Versus just the app wouldn't mm -hmm. stay on, and if you used it through like an internet app on your phone to access Facebook.com, mm. it wouldn't be listening. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know a lot of people de deleted Messenger because of that, mm -hmm. but like, I mean, working in film and we're just like all so invested in tech, like yeah. we're deep in it. Like it's just like, a it's baked into yeah, your work. It's yeah. yeah. Okay. What about, uh, you don't have to answer this question, but you could comment on your friends. Uh, what about piracy? What about like, oh, I want to watch a movie that I, and I want to download that movie or I want to <laughs> stream it on one of the zillion I sometimes have this problem personally because I want to watch a particular soccer game in Europe and I cannot, you know, access it legally, so I go to some sketchy streaming site and watch it there. Is that commonplace or...? Yeah. Yeah? Um, more streaming than downloading, Yeah. I feel like the shift has been. Mm -hmm. But maybe, again, might just be, like, talking to different people. Because, like, for a while, like, um, not... Sorry, I talk a lot. No, no, <laughs> you're all good. I'm just keeping an eye on the time. Yeah. Um, Pirate Bay was really big, and I feel now it's a lot more streaming, but streaming's gotten harder more recently. Like, harder to... Be Harder successful. To do. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like it just it just gets frustrating. Like I often give up. Like two yeah. of my favorite TV shows are coming out as I go, but I don't have cable. Yeah. I just have Netflix, so it's frustrating. Sure. Because like my TV show shows up like for one day on City TV and then disappears. Yeah. Uh, and so I have to get it, but I don't because it's illegal. <laughs> yeah, no, you you, <laughs> you wouldn't do that because we're recording this. Uh, definitely not. I saw no. But there's just DSLRs. We're good. What's that? That. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so you, I was going to ask a similar question. You mostly would watch Netflix then? Ne Netflix would be your... Netflix and then like... Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Cu yeah. A, a couple like things through my school of like watching to watch older movies like for, for film studies. Oh, okay, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite YouTube channel? I'm biased because my boyfriend's a YouTuber. Oh, yeah? Okay, we should... What's his, uh, uh, what's his channel called? <laughs> He's Mike the Bike. It's a Rust video game channel. Okay, Rust. Uh, Rust, which Rust is, a, is a video game. Yeah, it's difficult to describe video game. I know it's, it, but it's a, it's like a survival, <laughs> multiplayer survival game. Is that accurate? I have never played it. I'm going to okay. take your word for it. Yeah, it is that, I think, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, I've watched the videos. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that's a fascinating world. We <laughs> don't have time to go into, but we should, and we should just do a separate session on video games and streaming and... Uh, yeah, it's yeah. fascinating. I've learned a lot about it. Yeah, one of my, for the people in the room, one of my, like, pet things I've been meaning to learn about is how to raise money through, how to do fundraising through the streaming community. Because like millions and millions, it has, it has incredible attention. And I see a few peaks of success where popular yeah. YouTubers will raise like $4 million for this hospital or something. And, but I feel like it's very early days in that space still. And I feel like it's an opportunity for orgs to engage. There was actually like a big video game one, uh, I think end of last year. My boyfriend was involved about it, in it, and they, it was sounded incredibly successful. They didn't raise as much money as they did last year, and I don't remember numbers well enough to not misquote mm -hmm. them, so I won't. Yeah. But um, yeah, it seems insanely successful. Yeah, absolutely. There's a sidebar, but a funny, well, now I've, <laughs> now I've said it's funny, and it's definitely not, so <laughs> bear with me. Uh, do you know the, the, the magician's pen and teller? Yeah, Penn and Teller are some famous magicians. Okay. And uh, they made a video game, mm -hmm. and they made a series of video games, and one of them was like an uh, absurd video game called Magic Bus, where you just drove a bus from Las Vegas to Reno City and back, and that's all you did. There, you didn't pick up anybody, you just had to, but the, the challenge was you couldn't just leave it because the bus lists slightly to the left and drifts off to the side, and if it goes off the road, you go back to the beginning. So you had to stay committed to that game? Yeah. You had to stay committed to totally. that game. Eight totally. Eight hours it takes you to play this game. So some, some like YouTubers discover this game and now have this annual fundraising event called Magic Bus of Hope, which you can find online, where they raise millions of dollars and they get famous people or famous YouTubers to play Magic Bus of Hope and they stream 24 hours of Magic Bus and it's like totally ridiculous, but um, kind of very funny. successful. And I'm like sort of interested in duplicating that. That's um, 
Yeah, absolutely. And let's talk about, uh, as a last question, let's talk about your Instagram preferences. You, you mentioned you follow a lot of cin cinematographers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have an opinion about square versus rectangle on Instagram? <laughs> Uh, no, well, no. no okay, well, I have curious. a lot of thoughts around it, but no direct opinion because it, I'm often posting stills of films I've made yep. and it's endlessly frustrating the way that Instagram demands they get cropped and shaped and yeah. I don't have a good like cohesive aesthetic to my Instagram and as a direct photography I'm supposed to. Are you? Say more about that. How are you supposed to have that? Because I think well, a lot of people have, I've heard from others that like not cinematographers but rather people who feel they should have a cohesive aesthetic to their Instagram regardless of who they are true there's way too much pressure around it um, I, I actually made two separate accounts one for my uh, direct photography work and then one just for my life because mm -hmm. I like pictures um, but it, it was just I don't like that much upkeep it's too much work yeah um, but like my my job is visuals and as and um, uh, withdrawing the aesthetic of a film for a director and visually translating their vision. So the more people feel comfortable that I can accomplish that, the better. So I feel a lot of pressure to like make sure my images make sense. Yeah. Um, and some cinematographers I know that are like similar but above levels to yep. me are very good at it. Yeah, yeah. And I've, 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 I know people who have said they curate the grid of their like top photos very carefully so that when someone visits their Instagram profile, basically, they get this very aesthetic uh, experience. And there's been, I've seen people do like really cool posts of like, um, like my friend released a music video last year and um, it works in the moment and then it doesn't work in the future, mm. but they released seven photos one after the other so that together it made an image. Or made a little picture, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which I thought was really cool, but it doesn't, it doesn't have a good shelf life, so to speak, because yeah. it, you post my photos and it shifts. Yeah, there's an interesting, that reminds me of an interesting nonprofit case study that National Geographic did this series. They released a documentary on Vikings and they made a bunch of Instagram um, profiles just for this campaign. And they made basically a kind of choose your own experience, choose your own adventure experience through mm -hmm. Instagram accounts. And they built that same little, like they used nine photos to make a little grid and you picked one and then you went to a different account, which was very clever in the moment, but it doesn't, again, it doesn't last very well. What do you do with like your seven, you know, whatever, 17th Instagram account that's about the Vikings helmets or whatever, right? <laughs> you, it just disappears after a while. Um, terrific, thank you very much. We'll have you back up in a few minutes to uh, take uh, questions from the audience. A uh, hand, uh, a round of applause for Emma. Okay, um, I am going to now ask for another round of applause to have Kelsey join us. Kelsey Davis. I'm just going to get a quick drink of water over here while we start. So Kelsey, you are Coordinator Digital Communications at Canuck Place Children's Hospice. Yes. Yes. Um, and we have you here for that insight, but also uh, because you're a young person and we want to... Um, uh, have the same sort of conversation we've just had with some variation. Uh, I'm going to start with the same questions, though. What kind of phone do you have? I have an iPhone 8. An iPhone 8. Yes. And do you have a tablet? I do not. And do you have a laptop? Yes. Personal MacBook laptop? MacBook Air. Yeah. Okay. And MacBook Air? Yeah. Okay. Do you use it for work out of curiosity or is that... Occasionally. Strange? If I'm editing videos or on the road somewhere, I'll have it. Is that because your work laptop is kind of lousy? I don't have a work laptop. I have desktop. A work desktop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And it's maybe... a. It's yep. not a little clunky. A little clunky. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. So you get up in the morning. Does your yes. phone wake you up? Uh, no, I have an alarm clock. You have an alarm clock. Yeah. Is that a conscious choice or just an accident? Uh, conscious. Okay. Yeah. Say more about that. I've always had, like, I've had the same alarm, I think, since I was a teenager. Oh, yeah. And I'm just used to it, and okay. I prefer it. Yeah, good. Uh, when would you first pick up your phone? Uh, I'll roll over and yeah. look at it as soon as, I <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> as soon as the alarm goes off. Okay. And what is the first app you would look at? Uh, the first thing you would look at? Either email or Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Instagram is the clear winner. Yeah. Across. <laughs> um, and after that, what, so you'd say email and Instagram and then that's yeah. kind of good or you would you uh, I would probably, because I manage my brand's social media accounts, yeah. I will look through all of the brand's social media to see if I missed anything overnight and then... So you've I got like Hootsuite or something on your phone for work? Uh, yeah. well, I'll just use like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram for both me and the brand. Okay. It's a long morning in bed. It is, yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> Before Absolutely. I get up. Totally it is, yeah. yeah. Um, and how do you feel about the amount of time you spend on your phone? 
I think I spend a lot of time on my phone, but yeah. I'm going to count that as that's my job sure. for half yeah, the day absolutely. or a big yeah. portion of the day. Yeah. So I don't really have much of a choice. Yeah, absolutely. Would you be happier if your workplace gave you a phone for work only? And so you uh, have two phones? No, I think I would rather have it all in one place. Yeah. It just makes it easier to manage everything and everything's right there. Yeah, okay, very good. So I showed you, I showed the group that thing on my phone about like, why now, why less? And this, I, this was from an yeah. article I read about digital detoxing. Is this a thing that worries you or your peers or do you care about this? About like, oh, I'm spending so much time on my phone, I feel bad about that, I should take a weekend off from my phone, this sort of thing? Uh, I mean, again, like per, me personally, I don't know if I have much, but I would love to digitally detox, yeah. but I don't have the option because right. if I do that, then what's going on in my brand's world yeah. is going to kind of fall to the wayside. Mm -hmm. um, but I think where I am age wise, I don't notice it as much of a problem with our, with my age group in mm -hmm. particular. We didn't grow up with phones necessarily. We kind of hit that mid teens and then they yeah. started to come. So when did you get your first phone? Uh, 16. Okay. And was it a flip phone? It was a flip phone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to ask you the question I asked Emma about outside of dating apps, do you interact with strangers and outside of work, do you interact with strangers on the internet? Uh, nope. No, I don't not think I ever have. Really? No. Okay. No. Um, and so do you have younger siblings or nieces or nephews? I have nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, they, yeah, they, it surprises me what they can do or what they know. <laughs> what, what surprises you about it? Just even my, my niece, when she, when she was three, I think she pulled up a YouTube video of a singer that she knew I liked. And this oh, was yeah. a few years ago. She's older now, yeah. but it was just how quick she could find it and mm -hmm. what she knew. And she pulled it up on an iPad and I was, yeah, it's a bit shocking. It is a bit <laughs> shocking. Indeed. That's why we're here. Um, so let's talk about shopping. Okay. Uh, do you do a lot of online shopping? Uh, I'm kind of like the girls. I look, yeah. um, I will purchase if it's a, a company I know really well yeah. for like for fit and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, or if it's, I will shop like sale days. So boxing day, black Friday, yeah. mm -hmm. because it's, I'm usually at work or I don't have the convenience of going out. So I'll shop online those days. What about, uh, I, I was just curious, uh, I haven't thought about this for a while, but like Groupon or those things, are those, are those yeah, still used, a thing? Yeah, yeah, use that very occasionally and very, usually very specific. Mm -hmm. So it's not me I'm looking for specifically. So I want to play a little word association now. Okay. So I'm going to ask um, Kelsey here to say one word about a social platform, and then I'll just ask somebody from the audience to yell one out after that, okay? So um, Eli, let's model that behavior here quickly. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to say some other word. I'm going to say Vancouver Canucks. Flicker. No, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. No, just say your first word when I say Vancouver Canucks. You say... I'm mixing it up. I'm just doing. That's fine. We can. Uh, let's do that. Flicker. Vancouver Canucks. Perfect. Okay. And then if I say flicker, someone from the audience says Slack. Slack. Okay. Good. Uh, I may interrogate people when yell, people yell things the audience. I'm sorry. That was a terrible demonstration, but I think you get the gist of it. We know. Uh, okay. So we're gonna start with Facebook. Uh, older. Older. Facebook. Anyone? Sorry. Reader. Is that what you said? Or breeder? <laughs> Both of which are fine. Reader. Okay. Good. Uh, let's do Twitter. Fast. Twitter. Depressing. Yeah. Depressing. Good one. <laughs> Sorry, what it was the other one said? Dead. Dead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm totally curious about that. Um, we talk a lot about Instagram. So Snapchat? Outdated. Outdated. Snapchat? Never. <laughs> Say that again? Animal ears. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, right, yeah, animal ears. You refer to the Snapchat filters you can get, which put, like, cat ears on your head and something like that. Um, YouTube. Singing. YouTube? YouTuber. And sorry, what did you say over here? All right, no worries. YouTuber, yeah. Um, TikTok. Un unsure. <laughs> uh, TikTok? What? Rich. Rich? Yeah. Okay. And sorry, what did you say? Yeah, it's totally the new. I think of it as the new Vine in my head. I don't know if that's an accurate. I think a lot of things in my head that aren't accurate, though. So, 
That's why we're here. Um, do you have experiences watching older people use things, <laughs> use uh, devices? And yes. You're like, My dad is pretty tech savvy. Yeah. My mom is less so. And I think it, it's just the speed that kills yeah. me. Uh -huh. it's, it's, the, the, it's the putting on the glasses and yeah. opening the phone. And like, yeah. I'm just like, let's, let's, let's move, move on. It. Yeah, yeah. I saw a meme the other day that was just like, uh, every time you show your mom a YouTube video, she's like, oh, are these your friends? But yeah, not, no. Yeah. no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> um, OK, and how do you watch TV? Do you watch TV? I do. I so I do have basic cable at home, oh, really? okay. um, but no like PVR, no recording anything. So mm -hmm. I still will message my mom to record my shows that <laughs> I can't make Good. it home for. Uh -huh. um, but I primarily watch Netflix. OK, and yeah. would you say that's typical of your friend group? Yes, I think for uh, for the guys, they most of them have like sports channels, yeah. but most of my friends are all watching Netflix and very few of them have cable yeah. anymore. Certainly for me, the, the thing that has kept me on cable is sports. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, terrific. And then let's ask those questions. Do you have a favorite YouTube channel? I don't. I don't know if I've ever like... Like you, interact, yeah. like follow, like subscribe to no. YouTube channels? No, I don't okay. think so. Okay. Can I say mine? I should say mine. Sure. I love this channel, which you may, some of you may have seen, called Primitive Technology, which features a man, in a, a silent man in Australia, so a few people are nodding, who builds structure, like primitive structures with no modern tools at all. So he'll like fire clay, make, a, make clay like roof tiles, build a hut, and then put the roof tiles on it. And they're 10 minute videos. He's not like, hey guys, smash the subscribe button. He's just silent. You know, I've never heard him speak, even though I've watched 10 hours of this guy. And uh, he's also, uh, very handsome as well, so that helps if you're interested in that. Yeah, yeah. So perfect technology is great, and I used to. It's no longer live, but Emma, you probably know every frame of painting. Yeah. Every frame of painting is a wonderful uh, film essay channel. There's a million bad film essay channels, but every frame of painting is an amazing one. I think. Sorry. And local, yeah. Tony, I've forgotten his last name. Do you know his last name? Yeah. I don't know Tony. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's defunct, but you can still watch all the videos. Uh, Tony Zhao. Thank you. And Instagram, do you have like, uh, is there a segment of Instagram, like Emma follows cinematographers, is there a particular chunk of Instagram you follow? Um, well, sh shameless plug for the brand, but Canuck Place. Canuck Place, I follow Great it. Instagram Love it. account. Yeah. Love it, terrific. Um, no, personally, I think I'm, my favorite account, I will say, is Gary Gennetti. Do you know this one? No, I don't so think so. So it's, it's a kind of joke account with Prince George, like the like William and Kate's little guy, oh, yeah. making fun of like everyone in the royal family. Oh, really? So it's <laughs> abs funny. it's absolutely hilarious. Like yeah, he always they always are sort of ripping from headlines and then the captions are usually what Prince George is saying. Right. And it yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> Why is it called Gary Gennetti? I think that's the that's the writer oh, himself, the writer but this is stuff. just the theme that he's gone with. The it's shtick. phenomenal. Can I, I want to ask you a particular question. Sure. So we have a, a staff about Instagram because we have a staff person and I asked her, she's like 25 and I asked her, can you show me how you use Instagram? And I was like fascinated by the, the her, you would say user experience yeah. of how she goes through Instagram. Yeah. So when you open Instagram, what do you do first? Um, I would probably look, I would scroll you first. Would scroll first. I would okay. scroll first yeah. and then go back to the top and then look at stories. And then stories. And do you, do you use the discover the search, like go look at? Okay, like occasionally, mm -hmm. but not that much. Yeah, because the person yeah. who works for us, she, she stories first then yes. scrolls, but then she says she wastes hours in the Discover, which is just the exploring oh, see, and I'm like, I, videos. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, either, care less. But uh, I'm totally interested in these experiences because they're, they're like super relevant yes. Well, and I think work, from, right? from a professional standpoint, I would rather story what's going on at work yeah. or like a work because they're, I think that has more, you get more eyes on something that's a story as opposed to a post. Really? That's, so yeah, that's, you, that would yeah, be, yeah, the stories are more relevant yeah, than posts. Yeah. So, so you think more people probably do the think story we, thing. Yeah. And I'm like, from our analytics, we're getting more people looking at our stories and we are liking a picture that we're posting. Oh, that's interesting. So my preference would be to do a story. Do a story. Okay. Yeah. Uh, terrific. Well, with that in mind, I think I'm going to invite the other two panelists back up and we'll do some questions. Uh, so, yeah, a round of applause. You can stay where you are. Okay. Uh, can I hand this to you for a second? And I'm going to bring two more chairs up. And we'll put the chairs... Yeah, we'll put them on this side. Uh, put them on the far side of the line, please. Thank you for self-organizing. And you guys are going to have to share the microphone between you. Thank you. Uh, maybe you can hop over one. Penny, maybe you can just hop over a chair. Oh, sorry. Thanks. No, Rob. Just so you're all side by side. Uh, okay. 
So, uh, yeah, that sounds like I broke the chair just there. I think it's fine, but it could be a comic moment, and it'll be on camera, so that'll be nice. So, uh, who has a question for our uh, panel here? Uh, yeah, in the back. When you were looking for information online about a store or a restaurant and you Google them, what do you look at next? Okay, I'm going to repeat the question. Uh, so, when you are looking for information online for, say, a store or a restaurant and you Google them, how do you look at the results? Is that, or what do you look at? Yeah, describe the experience of searching for, like, your friend says, oh, I really like, I need a cool restaurant, and I don't know any cool restaurants. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make one up. Sorry? Fiore. Fiore, thank you. Now I'm going to look up Fiore. How would you, who would, like, like a crack at that? Who would describe yes, their sure. user experience? Um, so I would Google, I'd either, if it was a restaurant, I'd look at Yelp first, or Google reviews, although I don't really trust Google reviews. So I think Yelp would be my go-to Why for Why don't you trust Google reviews? Because I think it's either, I think there's, I mean, this could be for all of them, but there's a real discrepancy in like you either hate it or love it. Mm. So you're not really getting a clear, mm -hmm. um, a clear result. But Yelp, I trust for, um, for all restaurants. Okay. And usually the reviews are good. Anything to add? Uh, yeah, I, it depends. If I'm traveling, it's Yelp. But if I'm here, it's Google. Oh, why uh, is that? Because uh, I think it's because like I've lived here so long, so I don't. Like I feel weird doing too much research, research on something. I just kind of go and find out. Depends on like the proximity to where I'm going. Yeah. So sometimes I'll check reviews and rating, depending on if I'm going with other people. So okay. I can be like, it's good. I checked the rating. This is what it is. Oh, yeah. good. To back up so what I said. You have a little, little, <laughs> so you did a little research to justify your choice. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I don't really choose my own restaurants, but um, I know when enjoy, we go traveling. Enjoy that, by the way. Yeah. But it only gets harder. Um, yeah. My mom usually goes on like Yelp and like looks at the menu sometimes because like I'm pretty picky. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if it's good to look on the menu, like there's lots of information on like Thank the you. Good work. Yelp or website for information. So it's good. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, another question. Yes, over here. And then we'll go down front here. Yeah. I'm just going to repeat the question. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Finney said she doesn't post on Instagram very much, but your, some of your friends post yeah. a lot more. How do you feel about that? Do you find it annoying? Yeah. Um, well, I know like sometimes it is annoying. Like if it's like one of your friends or whatever, like it's fine. But that's why I usually don't like follow. Like you can like unfollow people that like post a lot. And also like I don't, but like some people have like spam accounts. So like mm -hmm. it's like your friend's like spam account where they just like like some people are like worried about like how many likes they get on like their photo on like their main account. So if they have something like funny or like a meme like something that they want to post, they'll put it on their spam account. And like I don't usually like following those because it's a little bit like boring and like some people do it a lot. So so the spam yeah. account is the one where they don't they care less about yeah. how many likes yeah. they get. Is this related to? Finstas, Rinstas. Does anybody know what is that? There's like a fake Instagram accounts. Finsta, do you do you? I think that's kind of different. Is I think that's yeah. kind of like for like stalking. <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanted to follow some people, but you didn't yeah, want them yeah. to know you yeah, were following them. Yeah, like if you're them, like, like, if you're like, it's kind of weird. I don't do it, but sure. um, it's like stalking people or like going on like like wanting to like request to follow people that like you don't want them to know that you're following them. Yeah, so like yeah. it wouldn't say your name. It would mm -hmm. be like like a random thing. So like that's different from like spam accounts because like they know it's you. It's mm. just a lot of posts, but like. Fins does or whatever it's like um they don't know who it is yeah, like it's, it's just fake. like so like if you're someone you don't want to accept it because there's like stalking you but so you're just sort of trying to achieve anonymity if you're trying to follow someone yeah. okay yeah yeah very good and you sir here had a question howie uh just freaked me out because i was wondering how you knew my name that's <laughs> right there yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very good with faces yeah um so I guess like my main question is how much of your this Instagram messaging thing is interesting to me. Like so how like a large amount of your social interaction in terms of commenting, I guess like for commenting in terms of posts one on one, is it mostly on Instagram? Is it mostly on Facebook? Is it mostly on So you're commenting on friends content, if you like, friends stuff. Yeah. yeah, what channel does it happen on? You're organizing, like you just said, you're organizing events 
through Instagram messaging. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just curious as like to what extent is your online social life Instagram versus Facebook versus anything else? Yeah, so if we could make a pie chart of the top three, say, uh, you had said it was like Instagram, text, and email probably. I yeah, think. but like I don't email my friends. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it'd be like, what would the, like it would be 80% Instagram? Yeah, 20, probably. Yeah. It's 80% Instagram and then like 20%. I miss it probably like I don't have Facebook. Okay. But, yeah. so you don't have Facebook. Do any yeah. of your friends have Facebook? No. No. Uh, and um, my other question was, so yeah, then this question of like DMs versus commenting. When do you, do you comment a lot on people's posts? Um, well, like I only, like commenting is usually like something you do between your friends. Like if you, if you post a photo and then your friend comments it, comments on yours and you yep. usually comment back like right. it's like a nice thing to do nice yeah. thing to say okay and for yourselves how much of your communication is instagram dms uh not that much not that much it's yeah. like jokes like if my friends post stories i'll comment okay and vice versa yeah that's about it but you're not and you're not commenting a lot generally do you uh, comment? on the stories yeah well on the stories or the posts yeah. stories a fair bit yeah. uh posts mostly just like complimenting friends yeah um or like making fun of my sister. Sure, of course, yeah, <laughs> yeah naturally, and yourself. Um, yeah, personally, very rarely like Instagram DMs. Mm. Um, professionally, I will use it to connect with people that I feel are valuable or can add something to the brand, yeah. and it's easier to come from the brand's page as opposed to personally. And just out of curiosity, do you, uh, does, does Connect Place get a lot of Instagram DMs? Yes, depending on what we're sharing and yeah. what's going on. Um, we had, uh, we did a telethon with the Canucks one night and I was sending, we had all the, con the wives on oh, yeah. our telethon panel, so I sent them all a DM to thank them and mm. that got a few of them back in to do a little extra fundraising for us, mm. so I find it valuable for, for stuff like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Very but good. personally, I don't think I... Yeah. Questions? You had a question, then we'll go here. Yeah. Yeah, I just wondered um, if any how male friends of yours, for instance, use these devices. Yeah. How do you think they might be different from females? Sure. Yeah, so how do you think uh, the behavior of your male friends differs hmm. from your female <laughs> friends, if at all, or maybe a lot? Uh, I mean, I don't, it's not, it's just accidental we got three women up here, <laughs> I think. But, uh, I think for, for my direct group of friends, we all tend to communicate mostly via text message. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple buddies who do s slide into the DMs to get a girl, mm -hmm. so I guess that's maybe more of a guy thing than a girl thing. Just but a fine slide into the DMs for us, just I mean, so we can <laughs> understand that. Ooh. Um, okay, so you, you see someone you like and you're going to send them a direct message on Instagram, mostly because you probably don't have their phone number or okay. any other way to contact them. Okay. So you're just going to... This is known as sliding into the DMs. Slip into the DMs, yeah. DMs. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah any difference, do you think, between... Uh, not too much. No? Um, yeah, the only difference, I think, is like a, a lot of guys I know that are into gaming is, are like way more involved in like Discord and chatting and like video uh, like gaming things more yeah. than typical ones. Can you uh, say a little more about Discord? What Discord is? I've learned it all secondhand. Yeah, uh, me too. It's just like it's a gaming channel similar. It's it's also apparently really good for business in the same way that Slack is. So it's mm. similar that like you can have multiple channels of conversations, um, and they're like they are able to be labeled different things. So like um, like for like the admins of a channel or like general crap. And it's both text, like text chat and voice, right? Uh, yes, you can call on it as well. And then yeah. uh, apparently one of the big differences between that and Slack is like you have unlimited amount of like uh, photos back and forth or something. And I think mm. there's a limit on Slack. Yeah. I haven't used it enough to know this, but this is what I've Yeah, told. Discord is like one of the secret dark parts of the dark net, I think, like a dark web, uh, and, or the, meaning part of the web we just never see, but there's a huge amount of activity that happens it's, on Discord. Yeah, it's huge in the gaming world. Yeah, and it's much less corporate than Slack, I would say, is the main difference. Yeah. yeah. What about yourself? Do you see any difference between uh, male, female? Um, I, I go to an all-girls school. I don't really think so. Like, I don't really experience it firsthand, mm. but I... I would guess maybe from a few guys I know, maybe less Instagram and more Snapchat yeah, is what okay. I think. Yeah. Okay, terrific. And you had a question. So for you, um, I know a lot of brands, some brands have the no DMs, some brands have DMs. Is there a difference you see in like what that means for young people interacting or, like, or the benefits for your brand? 
I'll just repeat the question. The question was for a, a brand. Uh, some brands do not accept DMs, private messages, and some do. And do you see that as uh, impactful for young people who might want to connect with you? Um, so I, w I will do my best to screen if I see something that I, if someone is commenting, it's usually because a story's gone up that they want to send me a message. Um, I have had, and I'm still kind of in the works of dealing with it, where I've accepted a DM that then is now I'm getting constant messages. And I think the person on the other end is just eager to connect and have someone to talk to. And I think originally he thought we were the Canucks and I had to gently tell him that we are not. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I will, I will accept where I can, but I also have an entire inbox that are left unread. <laughs> One and thing I'm interested in is that I see very few organizations being, uh, be, being willing to contact it by text message, right? Like I see young political organizations or really youth-oriented NGOs, but the average nonprofit just it doesn't do it yet, which is surprising to me because there's tools to do it quite affordably. Yeah. And so you can imagine that somebody on this panel might, might much prefer to text Connect Place yes. than email them to volunteer or to ask a question or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. we still get, we'll get Facebook messages, but it's just a really, it's a big discrepancy almost in ages. Yeah. So depend, you know, I find that on an Instagram platform, I'm going to connect with a younger demographic, whereas Facebook, I'm connecting with an older demographic. And my content that I'm going to post on each page is going to differ mm. depending on the audience that I'm talking to. So what I put on Facebook will be different than what I put on Instagram because it's two different group demographics of people that I'm speaking to. Yeah. Okay, All right. we'll do a couple more questions. Yes, sir. And then we'll go to you in the back. Yeah. So the question was, if a not-for-profit wanted to reach you, we'll start with you and go across, what would be the best way for them to reach you, do you think? Like if they wanted to ask you to volunteer or maybe make a small donation? Um, well, I don't know if this really answers your question, but like I get a lot of um, emails and like volunteer opportunities through my school like we have a club where you can we have um, organizations come in and like tell us about volunteering opportunities and like just stuff going around in our community mm. so like we have a volunteer fest every okay. year mm. um but other than that i'd say like probably ads and like instagram and other platforms sure. like that other people use okay uh i get emails from nonprofits and then um like messages on facebook probably and then there's also always like ads but like i just don't trust or read the ads um probably like facebook messenger just out of curiosity uh in your gmail account you know there's like a folder called promotions <laughs> which is like the kind of yes yeah you know, it's just like it's not quite spam but it's in that direction do you ever look at that folder no, no. no. well like once a week oh you do I'll, like okay. yeah. click on it and be like is this important no okay <laughs> yeah 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 but you do look at <laughs> yeah. it once, yeah <laughs> i don't yeah i'm okay. bad with deleting though yeah, so too many unread. you may have a slightly biased answer because you work at a nonprofit. Yes, but nonetheless, um, try to f ignore that part. Yeah, so I think for for my age group, which is late twenties, um, I would say pro probably still Instagram. If you're mm -hmm. gonna get someone visually, I think that's still a great way to to pull someone in is by using is by using good content, and mm -hmm. you can if you get a good photo or a great video, that can be all you need to to rope someone in. Okay, we're gonna do three more questions. You at the back there, yeah, you had a question. you say a little bit more about the economics of it? Um, yeah, just what is your understanding of the economics and your participation and empowerment or not? Sure. So, so the question was, when you post content on uh, channels like Instagram, do you think about the ownership, whether Instagram might be able to reuse that or own the, where the copyright sits? And uh, do you ever reflect on the economics of Instagram and how it's free to you, but they make money somehow. Is that a summary, a good summary of your question? Yeah, yeah, so. Um, I mean, I, yes, like I, again, I'm like, I'm doing it for a living, but I think again, where my age demographic started using social media, we were very aware that everything you put on the internet is for the internet. And mm -hmm. I think it's probably a younger generation that 
that is the lost piece that you forget that everything you post and even if Snapchat deletes, it's all somewhere mm -hmm. and it can all be found and all be reused. So when, when you want to run for prime minister. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> and it is, I mean, it can all, it can, mm. it can all be found. So, um, yeah, like personally, I'm, I'm very aware of that. And I also grew up in a household where I had parents that were very aware of that, that have instilled that, um, in that or in us. And we've kind of watched this, um, this generation sort of move up. So yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm aware and yeah. it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty conscious of that as well, especially like as a cinematographer, like posting my stills, I get like, I'm always like conscious about what it is that I know it's no longer really just mine when I post it. Um, and then, yeah, always like conscious of like, it's going everywhere and I'm like followed by anything that goes online. So like same way, just conscious of what goes out. Yeah, I agree with um, what you guys said. I'm I'm less worried about like the, like it's free for me, but like other people get money mm. like and like ownership or whatever. Cause like, it's just like random photos of me. Like I don't really care about that, mm. but I am definitely aware of like everything does still exist. Like after you like post it or comment or whatever. Um, and I definitely, for any of you guys that watched March Madness last year, kind of like the hero last year's winner game, um, he was getting a lot of praise in the news or whatever, and then some video or old Snapchat of him came back, and I remember it, like, it was some big debate, and he it was like some talk with his university, mm -hmm. then he went out. Anyways, um, I definitely have heard some stories that it's like life-changing things that you did a few years back that definitely come back to haunt people. So, so I do you still, do you think about that then? When I you, definitely do. Like yeah. I personally would never, even if it wasn't an option, I don't really feel like I want to post something like inappropriate or whatever, but mm. I definitely think other people like teenagers and stuff my age should definitely maybe be thinking about that a little bit more. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, a couple more questions. Yes. I have a follow-up question. Sure. Uh, is it common uh, for friends to ask you for permission to post a photo where you're uh, in Yeah. Like so... So is it common, the question is, is it common for, if someone took a selfie with you or a group shot or something, uh, would they ask your permission before they posted it on Instagram or another social channel? Um, I think for my group of friends, if somebody maybe doesn't have Instagram and they wouldn't have known if it was going on otherwise, then probably yes. Um, and maybe if it's like a very unflattering photo. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh -huh. And like, you can maybe like, predict that the person like probably wouldn't want it then mm. maybe um but other than that if like the people like you're in would all have instagram and like they post photos too and it's like a decent looking photo of them i'd say you probably wouldn't need to ask yeah no asking <laughs> no asking yeah unless like uh in film there is uh i had a picture of someone with, like a fake bong no actual weed was involved in the slightest <laughs> this was before it was legal but i posted the picture and had to like made sure it was okay before posting it because it looked like they were smoking weed. Other than that, though, like if it's just a selfie, no asking. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna agree with you. Um, if it's unflattering and I know someone's gonna be mad, I'll mm. maybe double check. But for the most for the most part, you know, if you can usually find one decent shot in a, in a group because you usually take a few. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Emma, I, f I follow you and your sister with your permission on Instagram, and you posted a hilarious photo of your sister. <laughs> On her birthday, right? That was definitely unflattering, <laughs> but she was probably fine with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the record, Darren was like very carefully, like she was like, do you, "You do not have to say yes when he followed my sister and I." But yeah. Um, yeah, it was some horrible pictures. But it's kind of like it was her birthday, so it's like kind of a thing you do is you post embarrassing yeah. pictures of someone Come on their on. birthday. Yeah, yeah. And oh, wait, yeah, go yeah. ahead. No, she's my little sister, so it, it had to be embarrassing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I definitely agree. Everyone, like, my age, like, birthday is kind of, like, an exception where oh, you can really? post, like, some really, like, kind of, like, silly photos. Oh, like, that's funny. Like, kind of, like, if it's your really close friend and it was, like, a joke or something, I don't think anyone would, like, actually be mad. Like, mm, I think it's kind okay. of, you, like, people do that. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. birthdays is, like, the purge. You have a free, a day off there to do what you want. Okay, one more question. In the back there. So the question was, you were saying you don't really use YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, d how do you watch videos, or do you watch any videos? And that's a, that was the question, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I 
I don't know. It's just, I feel like I maybe I used to a little bit more, but I don't know. Um, I think it's kind of something you use either, either you really like watching YouTube or you don't really. Sure. Um, but I know like my little brother loves watching like baseball, like other people playing video games, videos yeah. of other people playing video games on YouTube a lot. And um, I don't know. I think it kind of depends on if it's something you're interested in, like something like there are videos that you really enjoy the topic about. Like I don't, I don't really have a topic that I've found videos I really like about. But I don't know. Can I ask? Uh, so Twitch is like the video game streaming platform, mm -hmm. right? Would your friends watch Twitch much? I don't know what that is. No, no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I Twitch would, is like a kind of YouTube for like watching people play video games. I would definitely guess games. no. I imagine your little brother knows about Twitch. But Probably. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm in film school, so we just consume so many videos on like YouTube. Vimeo's more for like professional stuff um, and then like canopy or stuff through a school for watching like features. Um, but... Uh, so okay, yeah. definitely still used. In I'm, I'm getting the vibe that I'm the person who uses YouTube most on this panel. I, have, I subscribe to like 40 YouTube channels and watch it I think almost I'm every day. kind of a weird kid. Like everyone talks about getting stuck in a YouTube hole and that's like oh, yeah. never happened to me. Like yeah. ever. Listen, but like yeah. I, everyone I know that's happened to me. I was sick recently and I watched like a hundred animal rescue videos. Just a hundred <laughs> of foxes, all British foxes and partridges and stuff getting rescued. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm the same. Like I've never been on the, the YouTube rabbit hole. Um... I will, if I'm looking up something really specific, then, and I'll go to a YouTube video, then I'll look for that. But mm. I'm also, I have a pretty short attention span. So if I need a video, I'll go, even like Instagram video limits you to a minute. Yeah. So I'll go watch it for a minute on okay. Instagram and then I'm out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you everybody very much for those excellent questions. That was terrific. And thank you very much to our three panelists here. A final round of applause for them.